Loveline is meant for an adult audience. Loveline may contain sexually oriented content. On a good night, listener discretion is advised. What did that guy say? I don't know, that music was ripping. The phone number for Loveline is 1-800-LOVE-191. That's 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. And now, here's Loveline with your host, Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Yes, it is. And I'm already sick of the sound of my own voice. So <laughs> said two and a half syllables. I'm tired of me. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Fax number 310-854-4455. Adam Carolla, Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Is that good? That's good. Let's go. Siobhan Damare. Huh? Hello. Is that good? Yeah, that's perfect. Yes, she is from Mono. Um... Mono is a band, this is, um, uh, For Michael Blue is your first release, right? Yeah, first album. Out of England, and uh, they just uh, scored a huge hit from the Great Expectations soundtrack. And everyone knows the song, but may not connect the song with the name of the band. So before we get into the interview and all that junk, uh, Engineer Mike? We're going to play the song? Yeah, why don't we play the song, and then uh, you'll know what we're talking about. We'll be back with Siobhan.
Yes, and um, deed, deed, deed. Oh, that's what I was looking for. Yeah, that would be uh, Life in Mono by Mono, Siobhan de Marais. Huh? That's pretty good. <laughs> good. Yeah, yeah I'm turning it a little more French. Uh, Drew was arguing with the guest uh, as to how to actually pronounce her name during the break. <laughs> I, I think the guest uh, won. Uh, Drew took a um, <laughs> listen to a uh, Berlitz tape in 1981 and thinks he's a uh, French scholar. Drew, you speak fluent French, would you say? Mm, not anymore. But you did. I understood. Oh. What does ingenue mean that I say in the song? Come on now. Ingenue? Ingenue. It's actually pronounced ingenue. Oh, you know what that means. I mean, I know, what, uh, I know what our the implications are in this country. Putting him right in the spot. Yeah, he speaks good French. Yeah, but it's not Where, good. Uh, What does it mean in this country? Ange is angel, so... Uh, Here's like young chick, right? Yeah, in this country, yeah. Very, I mean, very like, good. Well, it's like naive girl. Yeah. Ten yeah. points, Dr. Uh, Drew. Yeah, let's, let's keep the test going. What does uh, <laughs> Ferris Jacques mean? <laughs> Brother Jack. <laughs> really? Ferris Jacques. Uh, Dormez-vous? Do you sleep? Are you sleeping? Uh, how about Dormez-vous again? <laughs> Yeah. I don't speak a lot of French. Uh, crepes? Does that mean anything to you, Drew? It means crepes. All right. And uh, le car. What would that mean, Drew? <laughs> Please. That's French. You never try to make another vehicle. <laughs> it amazes me how... They didn't I, call that in France. They called it an A2. Oh, uh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We call it a, a piece O uh, <laughs> out here. By the way, I wanted to comment oh, about Oh, well, let me tell you something about stupid le car. That le car had a button for a door handle, and you had to hold the button down when you slammed the door so the door would lock, but there was no handle on it, so you kind of had to put your hand in the door, but there was a little niche out for your hand, so you had to hold the button down with your thumb, slam the door, but you'd inevitably slam your fingers in the door. I think it was a cruel joke uh, the French were playing on us. I, I was commenting to somebody outside before we came in today, and uh, I, I was trying to figure out what for you made a good guest. And I noticed last night you really responded to uh, Angelica Bridges. All of a sudden, she was a good yeah. guest. She's from Baywatch. Yeah, but you weren't that into her. Driving a driving a Porsche. Yeah, but when you were, she was on TV. She let me drive her Porsche around the parking lot after the show. Oh, did you? Oh, yes. Was I nice? masturbated in it. <laughs> no. Uh, but but I noticed during TV what? shows, she, yeah, you know, she could take her leave or Luke Warren. But last night, she she sort of came on, right? Right. You realize why? Why she was a good guest? She got better looking. No, uh, why? No, Did you get I drunk or something? No, <laughs> I, I don't know why. why I is realized, that? I real, and I remember the moment it happened, and I realized this has happened to many guests, and it seems to be the deciding element for you to be, for somebody being a good guest is when they start laughing in earnest at your fart joke. I heard that. Oh, really? I was that told. Yeah. Right. Could be I mean, it. Am I right? Laugh at all his poo and fart jokes, and you'll be well in there. I mean, you just, you have good advice. You just went nuts. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I did enjoy that. Well, I mean, so, someone brought up lighting farts uh, last night, and uh, I had just coincidentally done that the night before. And actually, it was that day, if you count it, because uh, it was before 12 and it was after 12 when I did it. Right. But, yeah, I don't know why. I thought she was okay on the TV and delightful uh, here on the but radio. I remember the moment it happened. Right. you laugh at his fart jokes? Yes, um, he enjoys them. And But he's a doctor. Overtly, or do you go backstage and... Off about them. And I bought a hole in my lap. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess I guess the mental note is to talk more about gas uh, on the TV show. Mm. Anyway, Siobhan, let's not talk about my anus for just one minute. Well, let's talk about, about your uh, you. Retention. Yes, let's talk yeah. about you and uh, and mono. You're going to be playing the El Rey. The tomorrow. El Rey Theatre, which I think is on Will's show, which is tomorrow night. Yes, it is. And how do you recreate this sound live? Okay, well, we have a live band. We've got a drummer, Mikey. We've got James on guitar. Then we've got Magnus on bass. And then Martin on keyboards. I do all the vocals. And we also work with the ADAT. And we basically... What's the ADAT? The ADAT is the thing that creates all the, the samples mm -hmm. and stuff. And all the, no, that's me. It's yeah, me. Yeah, but you can't sing and... Yes, mm -hmm. I can. You can sing and back yourself do, up? Do, 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 do. Yeah, well, they then... help me. I've got, like, loads of people out there that are, like, willing to join in. So it's like... I mean, me, the audience. Me and the audience do the chorus. And the rest is... It's brilliant, though, because um, the album is one thing, but taking it live is, like, the magic. Because you get a touch... You get a chance to be in, in like, right in front of all the people that are no. listening to it, that love it, and... It's amazing. Now, the, the album came out uh, last month uh, out here in the States, but has it been out in England for yeah, a, a time? Yeah, it's been out in England since the summer. So, it's, um, so it came out before the movie came out? Oh, yeah. And then this song was plucked off of that for yeah. the Great Expectations the soundtrack? Yeah, director heard it and said, I've got to have that track for my film. It's just br it's like it's brilliant. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. It works beautifully. So we said, yeah, Robert De Niro is going to be in it. Why not? And... That was it, really. And do you think that it was that that brought it to the States, or at least expedited that process? 
I think it was um, something that made people aware. It was like an awareness thing. People were like, who is this? I had so many people that were said that they were sitting in the cinema and they saw the trailer and they were just desperate to find out, find out who the band was, where they could get the record from. Was the movie any good? I, I never saw the movie. Drew? No. Siobhan, you, you must have seen the movie. Oh, please. The movie was one of those things that I think... Is, you didn't like it? No, I think it's going to do brilliantly, or has done brilliantly, and I think it's going to do the same thing. It's going to clean up in London. Oh, it hasn't... That's so ironic. No, it's that about the, to come out in London. All right, the so the, song, the song comes out in, in, in England, yeah. and then uh, the movie comes out here, and then the song comes out here, and now we're waiting for the movie to come out. It's all England. over the place. Right. But it doesn't matter because the song actually has a life of its own. Right. Life in mono is doing its own thing by itself. So that's kind of cool. Your first, uh, th I mean, this is your first, yeah. this is mono's first this effort, is it. right? This is it. Oh. Effort. I like that. <laughs> Yeah, this is our first effort. I know. You really should have struggled more. I know. You really should. How old are you? 29. 29? <laughs> All right. What, what kind of jobs did you have before before hmm. this thing took off? Um, I, I was a, a donkey puller. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I was doing that earlier. Really? What? Wait a minute. There may be something else in England. <laughs> no, honestly, I worked um, at this place where Thank there was you. a fair and there was donkeys, and I had to pull the donkey around with a child on it and say, are you happy? Are you enjoying your ride? And then take them back. And then I worked in a diamond ring manufacturer. And All then right, I so you walked like at a, at a no, donkey I'd... ride. You pull, you walked the donkey around yeah, the circle. You walk the donkey off. around the block with the child on it, and the parent takes photos and goes, oh, honey, you're so cute. And they do all that. Then oh, you bring the child it, back it. with the donkey. Yeah, here we call them ass yankers. Well, I was never an arse yanker, <laughs> actually. I was a donkey puller, which I is understand. quite different. Uh, that sounds difficult, because uh, the donkeys, are, aren't they notorious for not wanting to do what you want them to do? No, that was difficult. That's why I had to pull. All right. Did you never wear a donkey pusher? Well, to be honest with you, there was one time when I was exercising this donkey, and I was going across the road with it, and it just decided that it would Sit down. lie down. Oh, it's good. And it was like being on a camel on the middle of the desert, and it's just not going to move. And all these cars were, like, driving up and just bibbing, and I was like, come on, baby, come on, you can do it for me. And it, the, the more I was telling it, the more sleepy it got, and it just lay down, and that was it. And so I had to pull the donkey, and it was completely embarrassing. You had to drag the donkey. We got there, though. And uh, did, did the donkeys ever uh, buck off the kids or kick? Kick one of the kids no, or, or uh, defecate were, on one of the children before they got onto the donkey or no, anything. No, they good? were like really old and mangy and depressed, and they really didn't have it in them to do anything yeah. but just like either sleep or walk. Yeah, God, it was very. Yeah. It was awful, still not really. a bad way to be put out to pasture if you're a donkey. I mean, better That's than right. the uh, donkey clue. So if anyone's got any donkeys they need pulling, give me a call tonight. <laughs> and then you line. also worked at a. Uh, <laughs> I think we're going to change the name of the show to that. You also uh, worked at a diamond uh, ring manufacturers. That'd be all right. Telling people, saying, hello, would you like to come and see our diamond ring manufacturing range? And then they'd go, no. And then I'd go, are you sure? And then I'd discuss it. And then they'd say, will you be there? And then I'd go, of course. And How about incorporating the two jobs? Tell them to get on a donkey and take a tour of the facility. That's a really good idea. Yeah. You know, they didn't think of that. That's good marketing, that is. See, I, I don't want to put you down, but that's American thinking. <laughs> very, you know very. See, you're so positive. Your things, we we marry two things. You marry them, you merge, that's and you right. maximize. That's right. You Fantastic. give us um, donkeys, we give you donkey aid. I give you donkeys, you give me diamonds. <laughs> All right, so those are the two gigs? No, and then I was a waitress. All right, that's, that's pretty normal. I but like the donkey the time, puller, most though. Most of the time I've been a singer. I mean, come on. Right. I be yeah, but did you, did, you, uh, did you, were you able to make a living doing that before mono? Oh, God, yeah. yeah the, the donkey pulling thing was just a hobby? The donkey pulling thing was my love of animals. I, I didn't get any money right. for it hardly. It was okay. more like love. Yeah, right. Donkey love. No, I, 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 people got to have hobbies. It's love a donkey evening here. Yeah, you know, I walked around Tijuana when I was 18 for about half a day looking for the donkey All pulling right. show. All right. All and right. never found it. Um, we're, we're just... You need to my coffee there. Sorry. This is just a very, very <laughs> uh, You sad pulling a donkey you. in Mexico, that's... All right, that's Mike. Show. Hey, hey. Mike? Yeah, hi. Hi there, what's You're 18. On? What's hi, going Mike. on there? Hi, Hi. Yeah, my problem is uh, I've never ejaculated before. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, do I have to, is it a big problem? Or? Have you ever had a nocturnal emission, a wet uh, drain? I think maybe once, but okay. I don't think I ejaculated. Is there any uh, special technique used on a donkey for this? Or? No. Oh, are, are you so saying you've never, you've never masturbated? I've masturbated, but I have come before, but I've never bit in no the fluid. moment that it comes out. Mike, you, have you got a girlfriend? No. Are you on any medication? Yeah, but it happened before I was on the medication. What medication are you on? Resperidol and Prozac. All right. Resperidol and Prozac can, can cause disorders mm. of ejaculation. It happened before, and I'm I guessing understand. he's on the Prozac because nothing's coming out of his penis. 
Now, I were, would be on that, too. Were you on any other medication at the time before? No, I wasn't. Nothing? No. Okay, so let me get this straight. You're having the sensation of an orgasm, yet nothing is coming out. No, I've never had an orgasm. Uh, How long ago? So you're reaching climax, but you're... You're reaching orgasm. Hold You're on, not reaching hold on orgasm. a second. Wait a minute. I'm going to go over there and hit punch Mike. Didn't he say that he has masturbated and had he the sensation? Ejaculate. But nothing came out. <coughs> Didn't I just say you had the <coughs> sensation <coughs> of an orgasm, but, but it, nothing came out? But he, let's see what, he, what he's okay. making a distinction amongst right. here. Mike? Yeah. You have, you have had the sensation of an orgasm, but nothing physically came out of you. Or, or do you... Shush up, Drew. Yeah, get it straight. straight. Sure. Something a little bit came out, like a tablespoon full, but I never had an orgasm. That's quite a lot. Yeah, that's so you, plenty. So you never had any kind of climax? Uh, no. It. And how old were you when you were put on Risperidol and Prozac? Uh, 16, 17. Mm. Mm. All right, I see. Had before that, so. But not to ejaculation? No. Were, no, but something came out. You just never had that sensation. Right. Only you, a little bit came out, you know. All right. We're, yeah, we're, but let me tell you, that's about it. I don't want to no, disappoint all you guys. Okay, understand? you two have got to have a masturbation session, and we'll right, see how it. much you can produce, and then we'll see if he's okay. I'm, uh, I'm, Here running, we go. A, I'm running a little <laughs> low because it drained the tank uh, oh, okay. a little earlier this evening. But uh, I think if I have another cup of coffee and a multivitamin, <laughs> I'm, I'm up for the challenge, Drew. It's still gonna be I make that about a teaspoon that Dr. Drew's just done. Yeah, yeah Drew, Adam. what do you, what do you, you know? Now, what do they say? It's 10 cc's? And yeah, how, many, how, how much is that? Go ahead and spit it, 10 cc's on the counter there, Drew. It's, it's variable for oh, different... Oh, that's not that much. That's about five. <coughs> it's for different guys at different times, and what depends on how much activity they've had and how hydrated they are and this sort of thing. But listen, I'm going to get at this a little bit. Did you have puberty at a normal age? Did you have normal secondary sexual characteristic, hair, product, and this sort of thing? Yeah, I filled out at 15. 16. No, normally? Yeah. And you weren't delayed with that? With my penis or with No, my with, with sort of your, the characteristics hair of adult... around the uh, mailbox? Yeah. It was all normal? Yeah. And do you have any other medical problems? No. And what is your diagnosis for the Prozac and the uh, Risperidol? Uh, OCD and schizotypal. Okay. So schizoid disorders can have funny funny sort of relationships to their sexual functioning. What's and, schizotypal? Uh, uh, sch it, it, schizophrenia is a type of schizoid disorder. It's a detached um, I, I don't know that I can... I, maybe his penis that. is detached. I mean, yeah. maybe that's not why he's not feeling well, anything. Are, well, people are schizoid are, are detached from their feelings very much. And uh, and I can have diff lots of disorders. All right, so what function. should he do? He needs to talk to the people that are... First of all, he needs to talk to people that are prescribing the medication. And this may not be something he has to live with. Uh, just something as simple as adding a little Wellbutrin sometimes restores sexual functioning. Having retrograde ejaculation, if that's what he's describing, and not have it assessed is not a good idea. Well, he's not having Two, retrograde. Something's uh, if, coming if out. If that's what it is. Well, and, it's not. And then secondly, he needs an assessment, an endocrinologic assessment, to see if indeed he's having normal sexual development no. and sexual right. hormonal... Siobhan, how's the orgasm stuff working out okay for you? It's been a long time, but yeah. Oh, really? Well, yeah. Why? So long. You're so beautiful. I've been on tour. Well, you you pack I, your hand, don't I you? I mean, get back from my tour. I get back from my gig, and I... Too tired. I go up to my room, and I mm -hmm. get into bed, and... You don't put the pay-per-view on? I really lonely. Actually, I do sometimes. Yes. Porn's not very good out here, though. Oh, tell it's me about soft. it. It's a bit soft. Come on. Well, no kidding. Well, listen, I can only imagine how, how England's porn is. They got porn in the newspaper. I mean, they got the page three. Do you know, it's so girl. tame. It's so tame that we all go into each other's room and go, oh, well, we don't want to pay in each other's room. We don't want to all pay for this, so let's see what it's like. And then we all, like, put two quid in, and we're like, ah, it's rubbish. Yeah, it's, uh, you know you're in bad shape when you you're having porn viewing party. No, no, I've never wanted to see a willy. willy. You can say willy. I've never wanted to see no a willy, willy so badly in my life. I was just saying it's this all the other suggestion. day. It's It's all like bleached highlights going up oh. and down, and no actual like. It's a lot of close up of the guy's face with a exactly. sweaty brow. Who needs it's this? Made by gay men, isn't it? Let's face it. No, no, don't blame the makers. <laughs> now that's where I got to stop you. Okay, stop me right there. Let me say. Let me explain what's Are going on. Are you a porn on. film director or something? I didn't mean to. Offend I have you been on the set before, and I do support the industry. And I can tell you this, it, there's, it's hard work, too, by the way. It's not all uh, fun and games over there. Um, and they don't have real good food. <laughs> it's not it's quite the spread. It's like no a six, six foot sub and a uh, two liter Mr. Piv, and uh, you're on your own over there. It's not like uh, the big Hollywood sets, you know, the me and Drew used to with the uh, Kiwis cut out like the Star of David and that sort of stuff. <laughs> but here, here's what I'm trying to say. 
they take regular hardcore porn films and they cut the willies out of them and they basically edit them up so that they can be shown in the hotel rooms. Now, is this now, the customers? Oh, so it's for the hotels that they take the willy out. This is the rule that we have in this country. Now, we cannot show hardcore pornography via cable or satellite. Oh, is that You the can rule? rent hardcore but porn. But what's hardcore about a willy? Hard, what, what defines hardcore? Yeah, why take the willy out? If you're going to suggest it, why not show Well, it? you can take the uh, boy out of the, the willy, but you can't, you can't take, take the, the willy, willy out, out of the, the boy, porn. But it's ridiculous. Right. You, see every, you see the woman's thrip knees, thrip knee bits. You don't see the willy. Right. Engineer Mike sitting back there going, I wonder if we have to dump that last uh, 30 seconds or not. Oh, well. Uh, if the queen's listening, you know, she's, she's PO'd about Sorry, it now. Sorry, queen. Uh, the penetration and the willy, the erect willy. <laughs> I love it when you say willy. The, the freestanding willy, the free willy, is what people have difficulty with in this country. <laughs> We're allowed to see um, the willy uh, chateau. Do you know that allowed to see it full erect? What? Yeah. Uh, you can't see a fully right. erect. You can see a guy getting out of the boner. shower. We call it a boner. Yeah, we'll call it a boner, too, sometimes. I think we invented boner, by the way, and we just got tired of it, so oh, we sent well, it over to you. Oh, when I over here, they look at me and think I want a sandwich. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> they may be thinking of Whopper. <laughs> I'm not sure. Oh, the Whopper. <laughs> Two boners, please. <laughs> so, let me finish. We're, we're getting convoluted here. You're allowed to see the brass. You're allowed to see the vagina. What's the brass? The, the, br oh, the brass. The brass bits. The brass, yes, that okay. one. And you're allowed to see the uh, bung. The bung. the bung. The bung. The butt. The butt. The bono. The boner. You're behind. But you <laughs> oh, cannot see the erect... Oh, the bum. Sorry. The bung. I was thinking of the bung hole. The you bum. cannot see the bung hole, but you can see the bum. Right. I don't know if you can see a bum's bung hole, but that's right, something to look into. Right, so you can into. see the bum, you can see the tits, but you can't see the willy erect. You can see the willy, but not erect. Not right. full potential that's willy. That's right. So that's you can see right. a soft boner. That's or right, a if there's such a thing. A the semi. willy in its flaccid state. Tell me one but more no thing. No penetration and no oral uh, willy uh, Are penetration. Are the willies superimposed, or do they belong to the models and actors? I believe they, the willies uh, belong to the people. They came in with those willies. So they, it's their willies. It is absolutely their willies. They're not superimposed. No stunt willies. Touched no, up, we right. wouldn't do that. Because I heard about stunt willies and I was horrified. No, no, that's a whole prosthetics thing and that's a different side of the business. Now, Marky you can, Marks was though, wasn't it? Yes, you can tell when you're seeing a movie with a prosthetic willy because the guy oftentimes will be wearing some sort of harness. Uh, <laughs> it's a studded thing made to look like some sort of sexual I know, truss, the got but one it's on. really just holding the um, prosthetic <laughs> willy on. <laughs> All right, so anyway, I'm with you. I On think if thing. you pay 12 bucks in a Ramada Inn, you want Willie. You want, we Thank want Willie. Thank goodness I have my own Willie I can stare wants at. Willie. <laughs> Oh, man. Hey, you know what? We start talking about porn, and ten minutes went by in the blink of an eye. Mike, or have you for come? You. <laughs> for you. <laughs> All right. Not, not for everybody else, but for you. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's I go. All right. we gotta shut get a break. Bruce Mike. Break. We All right, but break. shut it off during the break. I don't want him talking oh. here. Thank you. All right, uh, Siobhan, uh, her, um, her donkey and her uh, and donkey's willy will be and back. And penis envy. After this. Hi, I'm Robin Leach with those champagne wishes and caviar dreams. And you're listening to Loveline with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. Hmm. This sounds like a porn movie, too. This is one of your songs? No, this is Air, but I do like this band. It's called Sexy. There's Boy. a whole new uh, porn theme trend going on. All right, yeah. all right. Sorry, <laughs> I don't want to offend uh, our guest, Siobhan uh, Damari. Yes. Yes. Yes, Adam. From Mono. Hello. Yes. She reminds me of my old stripper girlfriend Lindsay when she speaks in that. Uh, well, hello. That's what I like. I had a girlfriend that was from Hounslow. You're joking. That's near the airport. That yeah, was that's, convenient. <laughs> that's what she kept saying. I didn't uh, take that as such a good sign. <laughs> I'd say, uh, hey, where's Hounslow? <laughs> near the airport. Near oh. the airport, mate. It was okay. good. You get off the flight straight in there straight back. Yeah. Knock one out. That was the relationship. <laughs> For Micah Blues, the name of the CD uh, out just uh, last month, and uh, we'll hear something else uh, from that as the uh, night wears on. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Hey, uh, is, does our accent sound okay, or do we just sound, sound really gorgeous. stupid? gorgeous. I love Seriously. it. Ah. No, but you know what I mean? Like, we, we, we really like the English accent. No, I, think I it's love sexy. American accents. Really? Believe you me. Seriously? <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Whoops, I've come. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> that doesn't just sound all nasally and stupid. No, well, that, that's your voice. That's not your accent. <laughs> oh yeah, Jenny. Shut. I thought we shut Drew's mic off. Didn't we do that? Thank you. Maybe Je he should shut mine off. Jenny, you're 17. Yeah. No, no, that's yours, my sweet. What's going on over there? Um, my boyfriend. Every time we have to listen to country music. Hold on, Drew. Don't whack on the console anymore. I missed. I missed the end of that. Oh, it was. Every time you do what? You do country music? Every time we have sex, he has to listen to country music. Uh-huh. I hate country music with a passion. Mm-hmm. Oh it turns God. me off sometimes. Mm-hmm. So I can't, you know? Right. You know how uh, 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 Dr. Drew puts the B.O. in boring and I put the F.U. in funny? Huh? Uh... <laughs> Uh, you know producer, you need, a, producer you need a mono CD. Yeah, that's what you need. <laughs> Jenny? Yeah? Why don't you play something you want to play? He just, he can't though. He can't come without listening to country. I think because he just, he always has, he takes control of the radio. Mm -hmm. He just puts it on the country station and mm -hmm. it bugs the hell out of me. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what to do. How, I mean, how old a guy is he? He's 18. Mm -hmm. Put him on sex strike. Hold on. Drew, do you... Um, I'm not really calling this a problem, are you? I'm like so. Oh, can we turn... Uh, Drew, uh, turn Drew's mic on, for Christ's sake, engineer Mike. Okay. It's not a problem, is it? Uh, no. It turns me off sometimes. I don't yeah, care. It's, I don't want to dignify this with an answer. Yeah, this, is, this, this is an important is a, show. Yeah, I got more it, fart it, talk to make. It's, it's sort of... <laughs> I mean, it's a non-problem in the sense that it's not a... All right, that's enough, Drew. Substantive Please, issue, it's just uh, you have to assert listen, what you you got you a boyfriend who wants to listen to country when he's having sex. You don't want it. You don't want to. Don't then, do it. Don't do it. And believe me, here, here, this is a... This is a, a don't case. women's ears close up when they have sex? But there, there is a reason... There's something to point Guys out Guys do. There is something to point out You correct me if I'm wrong, Adam. Women hold the power. That's right. Ultimately, real power right now in our interpersonal relationships are held by women. Yeah. And women don't realize that. And men want to hide that from you. They want you to believe that you need to please them. But the fact is, you do as you please, and you right. cut him off. You, you, you Believe me, he won't listen to country it music. It is anymore. not military. It is not uh, economic. It is it, uh, really, the vagina. But it's not... You it, know, but, judges, they shouldn't bang that gavel. They should bang a vagina. But uh -huh. they don't... Right. But listen, Celebrate. But listen, it's no, it, at one time in the evolution That's of civilization, the power. it was about physical prowess, that you could, you could, con, you could overcome somebody with, with power, physically power. Now there are laws that protect against that. I mean, oh. a woman can't be attacked. They, they, you know, the, the society in this country is such that a right. guy will go to jail for that. You rape someone, you get four months. So, have you told him that you can't reach your uh, I got him rid of him. That's not a problem. I hung up on her. Oh, a problem. We have people with real gone. problems. But listen, Siobhan put it clearly uh, and succinctly. She said, "Go on a sex strike." Right? That's right. Like Siobhan's been on. Stitch it up, girl. How long's it been, Siobhan? It's been a few months. Mm, yeah, it has actually. Really? Mm. Do you have a bloke uh, back home waiting I for have. you? I have. I've got a bloke waiting for me. And but, you, um, you, you don't cheat on him out here? No. Really? No. Okay. Maybe mentally. Not even uh, by that uh, lesbian who attacked you on stage the other night oh you were telling us about during the God, commercial? believe you me, I was not tempted. Oh, really? In the slightest. Not into no. that? I've been quite good so far, and I'm proud to say really? that. But wh what about the right woman, like uh, producer Ann? Where is she? She's uh, right behind. Well, Bring her in. Where is she? Oh, my God. As usual, she's not <laughs> listening. <laughs> I don't well, know where she is. that's not a good sign, is it? Mm, she hears enough of it to know she doesn't like it, and that's about are it. Are you into lesbians, then? Is that, your, is that your gig? I think all guys are to some degree. I wouldn't say I'm into it more than uh, most, like as much as Engineer Mike, but I'm we certainly... We call them carpets in London. Carpets? Yeah, a carpet session. Oh, like get down on the carpet? Yeah, well, it's like a, a carpet eating, munching, rug muncher. Right. She's, I, I, I think we're You're offending. Learning. We have to be offending someone's sensibilities. But on the other hand, I don't know if we're breaking any laws tonight. But what's interesting, it's she's bringing her cultural sensibility. It's not them. negative. It's, it was celebrating lesbianism here. Right, by uh, saying that they eat carpet. And I'm not against lesbianism at all. I think it's fantastic. I think whatever right. your, turns you we on. We call uh, homosexuals carpet e eaters, too, except for it's rolled up carpet. And it... Jacob, oh. okay. Jacob, what's going on? Uh, hi, guys. I'd just like to say hi to Siobhan. I think that Mono is a great band, and you have that sexy, trippy voice going in. I think it sounds great. Oh, thank yeah, you she, so much. She's sexy and a little nutty, but I, that's I good. And Adam, I'd like to say I, I think it's great how you and Drew have not let the success of the show go to your head. You guys are still the same as you were when I started listening two and a half years ago, and I appreciate that. We learned a lot from you guys. Does this show have any success? Yes, <laughs> you may be right. I guess well, I anyway, Dr. Drew. Yeah, Jacob. Um, 
I found out last week that I have what's called, uh, I can't remember the name of the cyst, but they said it's congenital, and it's formed, or it's caused by the spine. Oh, the pi pilonidal cyst. Exactly, that was it. Mm -hmm. And um, they said it's nothing to be seriously concerned about, but that Correct. I have it removed. Correct. Have any of these ever become, um, like, cancerous? No, absolutely not. No? It, it, it is just a small sinus tract that goes back towards your sacrum. And uh, they can either be opened up and then allowed to close in so by primary intention from the bottom up, or they can actually be sort of cut out. And they tend to recur. That's why most surgeons go for cutting them out. Now, where is that located? Right, right above... Roger, don't drop your pants. Probably for above sake. the rectum, but below the rectum. The, uh, right at the, the sacrum is the bone at the, the bottom of your back. I heard not you quite that far down. All right, listen. Oh. Don't don't start throwing around a jargon <laughs> with Drew. You'd be sorry. It's just that Drew's got his knickers down. <laughs> <laughs> he's got his knickers down. <laughs> That's why nobody gets offended. And he's really showing. <laughs> Hey, uh, Drew, I, good. I remember hearing the word sinus uh, in there. Yes, the sinus um, tract. The sinus tract. Now, see, when I think of sinus, I think of uh, the nasal the airspace. cavity. It's a, a hole, a cave. That's you have a cave in your, uh, just, above just, your, 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 it's, it's your a small, bone? Usually a small hole that drains, and if you, if you explore it, it's, it's a little tract going back in. Do you have sinuses all over your body? No. You have a sinus here? Yeah. How does the, the thing manifest itself uh, just above your crack? As you get in there, there's different theories about it, but some people, most people believe it's a remnant of development. Something's okay, left wait a minute. From that you have something that enters through your nose and settles? No. Oh, what, you, what did you say about a sinus? This, this, these, are, these, are your, these are your maxilla, your nasal sinuses. There's Hold on a sinus. second. Am I going nuts? You were talking to Jacob about sinus, sinus something, track. and he's talking a about track. a lump on his ass. <laughs> what is the connection? No connection. Uh, let, me, let me rescind the term I used. Stop it, Adam. I'm okay, not, I don't know what you're talking me, about. Give, give me the dictionary. No. Okay. Hey, Adam. What? Are you going to be at the Nature Festival this year? I don't know. What you know is what? that? We just got a, Anna was telling me before the show, we just got a call on that. Oh, we did? He called us like two months ago. Well, I want to go. I camped out for 15 hours for tickets last week, and I pray to God that you guys are... Or, I'm we're going to... Gonna, it's a definite try. This is our affiliate, Washington, D.C., WHFS, and they have this huge concert in RFK Stadium. There's about 60,000 people yeah. there, and I've went, I think, the last two years, and you get to go out on stage in front of uh, 60,000 people making an ass of yourself. Uh, when is it, Jacob? Sinus, sinus. This, this year it's on May 16th, and I wish Corn was going to be there, because yeah. I love when you tell the story about when you went to that festival in Minnesota, and you just kept yelling Corn on stage, and the crowd yeah. was behind you. That was a, a pittance of the crowd. It was only about 35,000, but it wasn't uh, 60. A dilatation in a bodily canal. The sinus. So it could, you could have a sinus. Your, ass could, your anus could be your sinus. Is that true? Uh, Look up dilatation. Is it sore? No. Yeah, it does hurt. He's got to cut it out, right? Did yeah. you tell him? Yeah. Scott. Good morning. You're 36. You and listen, if those uh, WHFS the Vol guys want us to come out, why are they? Uh, they're giving us a late notice, aren't they? Well, for us, but oh, okay. <laughs> I guess it's a month and a half. Yeah. Scott, I, I listen on that same station, and I really enjoy your program and appreciate your uh, your work and your sense of humor too. Thanks. Um, problem I have is intimacy, or I guess lack of it. I have a, I have trouble with intimacy. Yeah, you're like a robot. You're like I am. That is true. They're real, a similar kind of feel from both of you guys. Yeah. Like if someone says to you, um, oh, I suffered a terrible loss, you go, I'm sorry to hear of the passing of your mother. I'm sure it brings you great pain. You have my condolences. You sound like the robot from Lost in Space, right? Uh, well, I don't know about that, but I, 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 it doesn't really... It's really not detached. very emotional. Well, least. let's hear you say, let's hear you say the phrase, I've never loved a woman as much as I've loved you as much as I love you right now like I'm talking to a woman yeah go yeah. ahead okay. I've never loved a woman as much as I love you right now Holy crap. Better, than I wasn't better than you Adam yeah I gotta use you Scott <laughs> you're coming okay. with me I'm not using it so you might as well wow. Are I you think this is I really do think that you've been yeah. wounded Siobhan ruined some panties yeah. we, we I've got a feminine point of view on this whole thing because a lot of blokes <laughs> have got a problem with intimacy and I think maybe you've been hurt before or you've been abandoned by maybe a parent or your mum or something Ooh. Ooh. <clears> hey you've actually, heard this show before and you're actually afraid of, of that happening again so of you've course. built a defense mm. mechanism wait, wait. around let's you let's go to hold break on. I want to explore this with yeah. you hold on a second Scott we're going to find out what Scott does for a profession I'm guessing either actor uh, car salesman or politician because no. that that was good. Number two, we're going to find out about Siobhan's boyfriends because uh, she oh, knows. No. 
Well, much. You, mu you must have no. had a boyfriend that has went through this intimacy prom. Otherwise, you wouldn't know so much about it. I know a lot of guys. Oh with that yes, problem. yes, guys you've dated. Okay, we'll be back. Hi, this is Kristen Johnston from Third Rock from the Sun, and you're listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Yes, you is. Phone number for Love Line one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. F the fax number. Siobhan Damare. Damare? Hello, Adam. Damare. Hello, Dr. Drew. And hello, you on the line. She's from uh, Mono. Is it Scott? Yes, I am. Oh, it is Scott. Yeah, we'll talk to him in a second. Mono is... Um, how many records you sold in England? Do you know? Loads. <laughs> Tons. What are I? I don't know. I haven't got the figures. I just, you know, I no. just make the records, sing. Do they have gold and platinum and all that in England? They probably do. I'll probably go back and get one, pick one up on the oh, way home. Oh, you're very the cocky and cocky <laughs> at the same time. And you love it. I do, you little minx. Look at her. <laughs> Finally, a woman uh, provides the sort of challenge I need in a relationship. See? Chase her around the bedroom. See? Yeah. How tall are you? Five foot four and a half. How yeah, tall are you? Yeah, indeed. I'm six two. That's okay. I've got my heels on. Yeah. I can whip you. Can you stand up for a second just real fast? I'm going to get a quick look. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's nice. Hey. Hey. All right. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> the Siobhan's got Come a lot of personality. On. Stand up, Adam. Oh, okay. Hold on. You want to see my bum? I want to see your willy. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it oh from there. Oh my God, Mark you Mark. Uh, you're. Uh, <laughs> that was good. Thanks. Uh, should I stand up? Oh, no, sorry, I, I'm just I'm in like, shock. I, I haven't seen a Willie for so long. Really? I'm totally shocked. Close your eyes and picture a flesh-colored chapstick. What's and the there chapstick? There you have it. A chapstick. Like, oh, like a lipstick. <laughs> oh. Oh my God! You're joking. <laughs> a you. pig Willie. Scott. Yes. Pig Willie. Pig Willie. Oh, pig Willie. <laughs> oh yes, like a pig Willie. Yes. <laughs> Thank a you. little curly pig Willie. Thank you. Scott? Yes, I'm here. All right. So, Scott has trouble being intimate. Scott, what do you do for a living? Uh, I work in customer service, and I hate it. Mm. But that's where that fake sincerity came from. Uh, probably. I mean, oh. I'm not I'm not a... I guess I'm not a people person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. My sister would be the people person. I'm not quite sure why folks who gravitate toward customer service, customer service uh, don't tend to be people. They're certainly not people pleasing people. I can tell you that right now. And I'm not sure. Do they ask you if you hate people before they send you <laughs> over to the customer service department? Well, no. It took me years of uh, doing that to realize that you know I'm not going to charm anyone with my personality. Mm. You know, I I find I, that quite attractive. Actually, I'd like to draw you out. Oh yeah, well, you're one, one of those. That's, well, one of those that's why she's. That's why she said all, all right, the crazy Siobhan, boyfriends. Tell, us, tell yeah. us about the boyfriends that you dated that were unavailable emotionally. Okay, I think. Well, from my experience, those that are one of those Gallagher brothers. No, they're actually quite. Um, actually, that's another talk show. No, they're actually. Um, I think. I think you're probably really painfully sensitive, and you have probably been abandoned or wounded, or you mm -hmm. have huge fear of rejection. Perhaps something, whether you're conscious or something you remember as a child, maybe your mother or a girlfriend when you were a kid, or maybe the girls at school. Someone. Not earlier. It's gonna, it's gonna be mom, dad. Or the womb. Mom. When you were in the womb. It's gonna be mom. Maybe no the girlfriend. No, mom was either not available or left, or even some abuse. Perhaps. Somewhere along the line, you perhaps have felt abandoned or rejected in some way. So you're terrified of where's being intimate with someone. Where's your mom, Scott? Uh, she's uh, married to my stepfather. Do you, okay. you, do you get along with her? Um, yeah. I mean, I'm closer to her than I'm my stepfather. My stepfather, uh, I'll call him dad because he's been around since I was about four. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember my real father being around. What happened time. to your real dad? Uh, they just got divorced. My parents didn't get along at all. My dad, real father, was very lazy, didn't want to work. What, why, how come he wasn't ever a part of your life? Um, well, I don't remember anything from the time. I, uh, youngest memory I have of anything, I think I was about uh, four and a half, five Look, years old. i got to tell you something. My kids are only five years old. And believe me, there is a completely developed life, emotional life that they have. Yeah. And to say... They're uh, smarter than his wife. And to say, oh, you know, I was only, I was only with him until I was five. I mean, this that's huge for a well, child. And to have him then leave and not look back is right. just a profound effect. I, I think he may have been gone from the time I was about three and a half because I don't know how long... Right, either way. You, you there's abandonment your kids. there. Yeah, of right. There's rejection. Of course. And, God knows and loss. Mom, and Mom has got some issues, too, by virtue of having been with that guy. Right. And, and my stepfather was very... Um, abusive. I guess domineering and abusive. his... He came from his original... He had two kids from his previous wife who was 
They're married. 20. Did he ever strike you or anything? Uh, once or twice, but not you know when I was older and usually when I beat up my sister, he'd you know show me how it felt, I guess, but not no no real abuse. No. All right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. By the way, that that qualifies as real abuse, but okay. I mean here, at least he was beating his sister. But the the point is, <laughs> is you know you grow up and um, you're like a. Um, you're like a uh, a beautiful uh, you're like a like a like a hand like a new hand like a baby's hand, and uh, either you stay supple or you get callous depending on how much uh, how, how much abuse you've seen and how much trauma. I mean, you know what I mean. If you're yeah. out uh, chopping logs all day, then you get callous, and that's what kind of childhood this guy had. His uh, mom was a little bit uh, not nurturing enough. Uh, dad Off split. With the uh, there's a lot of abandonment, a little physical abuse, and he's just shut down. Yeah. And that's what happens. This is what happens to all people. But fear not. It's not the end of the world. Intimacy no, it is. will come back. Oh, no, well. it's not. Intimacy will come back well, again. Well, now, why do you need to fix somebody like that, though? Why do you need to fix them? You. Why Me you? Me personally. Yes, why am you. I over-functioning here? Um, basically, because I think it's it's really awful if you go through life. No, no, no. You said no. you were sort of you. attracted to dr- you want to dry them oh, out? Oh, no. Or? I just felt that because there is hope, I know... Was like, your dad are, a little distant? Uh, my mum and dad were divorced when I was five, mm-hmm. so I didn't have anything to do with him. But um, well, she had the intrusive mm-hmm. parent. There has been there Adam, have been those Adam. in my life that haven't been able to be really? intimate, ask, and then I've the left them alone, and then they've come back and said, "Oh my God, I want to be intimate with you. I just didn't know how to." Well, here's the, uh, Did, uh, how, how old were you when you first had your singing lessons? Um, I would say sixteen. And ballet lessons. Seven. Uh huh. Okay. Uh-huh. Ever have an eating disorder? Um, a little bit. Yeah. Maybe I think all women do. Just mm, because not all women no, do. No, no. Why? Well, right what's that all to do yeah. with? Eating disorder. Oh come on! Oh, don't make me into one of your yeah, victims. Slow <laughs> down. <laughs> Hold on. Victims, please, <laughs> my dear. We're trying to help people. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're making me into like someone that's got all these disorders. Hold well, on, but, I'm here but, to it, help. It, but it's a match for somebody like Scott. We, you so are right, helping. No, I just think that um, the intimacy is going to come back again, but it's going to take some time and some working through and some and understanding. That's right. It, it, and you can't just sort of magically wait for it to and appear. I feel nurturing you have to work towards him. Okay. All right, sweet pea. Okay. Shh. So little, don't start on me. You. Little offensive here. Mm. It's okay. It's going to be all right. Okay. Your monk's You just friends. need a bit of breast milk. That's right. Me too. Save some for me. Okay. Ah, wouldn't that be great if someone did a study and they found out that if you drank a gallon of breast milk, you're all better? Mm. Would that be great? <laughs> it sort of like freed your mind up and you, you went back to uh, the have, innocence of, yeah. of the youth. You can probably get some. Like go to a Lamar's class or something and get some spare breast milk. Well, you figure if you hung out at a Lamar's class and you just stood out front with like a bucket and said, uh, Breast milk, please. That's right. And your little, little side <laughs> Look at the open cigar uh, cigar box. There are clubs. Or, oh, it'd be great. Um, I'm a nursing mother. Speaking of breast milk, and boy, that is weird. <laughs> Jesus, that's weird. I, I mean, no one was. Look- I wasn't looking. Drew, were you looking at that call? Uh, I, I, Do you I, mind I read expressing? it, but I didn't. I didn't pay attention to where we were going next. So. All right. Well. Um, well, you didn't bring up breast milk. Go ahead. My daughter is eight months old, mm-hmm. and her father has been indulging himself in some some stuff that's not legal what um pot it's marijuana addict right okay um and he's been smoking it frequently Uh lately but what i had a question was is supposedly it stays in your system for 30 days right oh it depends how much you've been smoking and that sort of thing but go ahead frequently in the past two weeks okay now my question is is during sex or actually during oral sex either one um, Are you going to ingest enough to uh, right. uh, get into the breast milk? Uh, interesting question. No, I'd say not. Interested wow. slash retarded. No, interesting question. I mean, interesting with a little bit of retardation sprinkled on top of it. It's it not all interesting. It's necessarily, it's all retarded. It's just being concerned for my Yeah. No, I know. It's not, it's not 100% percent right. retarded. Here's more what you need to 70. concern yourself with with the child, and that is that there's about a 50% chance that this child could inherit the addictive potential. Really? And we need to educate the child as it grows up. Does and the child look stoned? No, no. She well, no, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Drew, the guy may not have the addiction uh, to a drug because he's been smoking the weed lately. Is he an alcoholic? Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Shut Drew's mic off. I've had enough of this ridicule. Please, make an ass of me in front of the beautiful Siobhan. <gasps> Just about to get some breast milk out of the deal. See? <laughs> All right, so he will not pass it on to you via his uh, semen, but the, the bigger picture is that if this guy has a, a, a gene that he may pass on, you're going to have to watch the kid. I need a mic. I really-
All right, can you turn the mic on just for a few and, seconds. And here's the thing that I've, I've noticed over and again, that for the children of alcoholics, mm -hmm. uh, the, the most important thing is try to raise as emotionally healthy a person as you possibly can. Right, I Educate, was an alcoholic. Of course, and that's what... Uh, it, that's it, why you married the guy. That's why you marry alcoholics, exactly. And, right. and That's why Siobhan wanted to date the, uh, Scott, the last caller. Right. It's all codependent, right? Yes. Right. Exactly. Yes. But, but all right, the fact is, though... Um, what the hell was I talking about? I don't know. I think your relationship together is a bit S and M. He switches you off. He puts you on. He's very manipulative. The whole it's thing. It's just S. <laughs> but it's great to watch. It's no M. There's just the S. <laughs> Uh, but Fade. but June, the, the, here, here's here's an axiom that I think is very interesting and something to keep in mind that for the children of alcoholics who eventually do develop the disease, mm -hmm. a, nothing is more important prognostically for the child than a parent in recovery. It helps with the emotional availability of the parent, obviously, and the child thereby is raised in a more healthy environment. But more importantly, the modeling of a parent in recovery causes the children of alcoholics to get into recovery much more easily than if that parent doesn't do so. In other words, I've seen plenty of children of alcoholics develop the disease, but they, they, before too much consequence develops, get into recovery, and they embrace recovery right away, and they don't relapse a lot, and it really works out very nicely. So but he, he, the point being, your husband needs to get into recovery and at some and point. And isn't soon. it just like uh, one of our callers whose uh, big concern is that uh, she trips, falls into a hamper, it gets tangled up with a tube sock uh, that he'd used to um, uh, rag himself off with earlier in the right. day and somehow passes the cannabis on right. She'd worry about to, this. She'd worry about to that. the youngin via yeah. the breast milk more than this guy just boozing. Yeah. Uh, this guy potentially uh, having the kid in a car and driving off the side of a cliff or, or because then, he's drunk. Or then really acknowledging and dealing with the more difficult issue of having an alcoholic husband. Okay. So. Thank you. I'll be back. I feel so liquidy. Really? Yeah. 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 Love line, you little pecker heads. And uh, we got to take a little 10 second break, so we'll be back in 10 seconds. This is Love Line on Radio Station. NRK Heavens Portland. 54 7 NRK. Head on the radio? I, I don't know tonight. I'm losing all my bearings. Yeah. <laughs> Look at like a woodpecker as a pecker head, it's, right? It's kind of when you get you get culture shock. I'm kind of in culture shock. Too. Yeah, because Siobhan? Yeah. Siobhan oh, is I'm here sorry. from uh, from Mono. Mono is uh, a band that, uh, well, this is their first uh, CD for Micah Blue. Is that for Micah Blue, like for Micah the Laminate? Absolutely. Oh, really? Like this uh, green yeah, for like Micah really, here? Yeah, like really depressed. Actually, no, this looks a bit more woody. Well, no, I mean the top part here. Yeah, like really like disposable, cheapy, nasty. I mean, I like the studio, don't get me wrong. Yeah, it's But it's like a sort of a, a 60s kitchen sink drama kitchen. Right. And then Blues is like organic and mm -hmm. wholesome and real. For Micah Blue, honest. I like that. I've uh, That was my porn name for a few years right. in the late 70s. Were well, you a porn star? Yeah, for Micah Blue. Ah, but you made a fortune uh, with your willy. Yeah, that's what I did. Boy's my ass sore. <laughs> you pioneered that whole strap on with the studded belt. Uh, yeah, that was me, the prosthetics. That was you? Yeah, I was the only man with a small enough penis to fit uh, <laughs> behind the prosthetics. Did you have a mullet hairdo then? Yeah, I was wearing the mullet. <laughs> so you have mullets here? Yeah, where you have, where you have like the well, buzz all cut. All porn stars have mullets. You have the, they have the buzz cut on the side and then the long <laughs> hair in the back. <laughs> It's, Why? It's really like having two <laughs> haircuts. Right. You can't decide whether to like let go of the back. It's about letting go. And you've let go, I see. It is one of the calling cards of being a moron is right. having the mullet hairdo. <laughs> All you Listen, I believe you can judge a person's IQ by their hairdo. By their mullet. No, just by the do in general. Think about it for well, a yours second. Yours is covered up, so maybe you're like holding back. Well, here's the thing about hair and IQ. It's not about how nice your hair looks ultimately. It's about what you've chosen to do with what you got. You right. see what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't blame... Putting a hat on is viable. Maximizing. I don't blame people for having bad or ugly That's hair. It's kind of nice. It's sort of Italian-y. Yes, it's very... It's, it's like Jesus' hair. Oh, my God. I'm like a Jesus if he was an atheist. And no, Jesus had long, straggly, long Yeah, but it's that thick, it's... Books. Well, you got to read the Bible. So he had hair well, of You look wool. like a sort of Italian Jesus, maybe. Hair of yeah. wool? And then they say something like he had like woolen looking hair or sheep's head hair or something like that. 
Isn't there yeah, something like, in the Bible that says he was tall and lanky and he's kind of broad at the shoulder and narrow at the hip and everyone knows you don't give no lip to Big Jesus? Big Jesus. Okay, you better, before you go, <laughs> Big Jesus. He's lost that. Big yeah. bad God. He's lost that. Oh, no, it's all coming out now. <laughs> you remember that song? No. All right. I, I don't know. Someone, the entire universe someone now. go look in the Bible and tell me if uh, God did, it was not described about having uh, nappy or woolly hair. That's why black people think God was black. What about yeah. the, the cloth of Turin or whatever? I the shroud of Turin. Right. I mean, it doesn't look like woolen no, hair. No, please. Jesus was mixed race. Yeah. He was a little bit of everyone. Except for the Asians. Mike. The Japanese in him. Mike. <laughs> What's going Hi, on, Mike? Dr. Drew. Mike. What's up? Dr. Drew. Yes, sir. Uh -oh. Mike, um, something's up with Mike, right? Yeah. Hi, Mike. Let's no, find out what's going on. I was just wondering when um, the odds are most likely for a woman to become pregnant. It's different for different women, but it's about two weeks into the cycle. What happened? Two weeks after. What happened? What happened? Uh, I've just been having unprotected sex with my girlfriend. Hey, Mike, what's going on in the background there? Oh, uh, just some music. Oh, some music? Yeah. Yeah. What is it? What are you listening to? Um, Hendrix. Which song? Dolly Dagger. Oh, Dolly, day. Okay, see That's if I can work out into that. Jesus, right, right, right. day. Right. Okay, uh, Mike. Look, uh, you're having unprotected sex. There's a real probability she can get pregnant. Okay. Uh, uh, why? What are you worrying about now? Well. Why today? Why this minute? Yeah, that's true. But I just want to. Um, you know, I was hoping I. Hey, 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 Jackass! Can on. you turn the stereo down, please? Oh, okay. Yeah. Get What's that water? He's smoking a bong left. You there? Yeah. Get the morning after pill for her. Get it now. So, well, so hold on. When did they do it? Could I get it myself? Yeah, I would think so. I, I don't know. Can I, boys get it? I, I, listen, I... I think I would give it to a male who asked for it to oh, if his girlfriend was interested in it. I I mean, did. I, if it I, doesn't have to be 48 hours after. It's within 72 hours. So presumably it's been within 72 hours of your last contact? No. Ooh, longer? Listen. Longer and shorter. Mike, shorter. don't get around Longer this stuff. Probably the week after pill. Slow Longer down. Longer and shorter? You're going to make him take it as well. What's the most recent contact? Um, about two hours. All right. Mike. Hey, Mike. Yes. You smoke a lot of weed? No, not at all. Really? Yeah. Then you better start smoking weed because everyone already thinks you do. Mike, Might as well do it. Mike, get the morning after pill. At least protect yourself from whatever potential there is for your more recent contacts. Mike, and then why get her on the pill and test? keep her on the pill. Get up. Yep. Yeah, well, it'll still take a couple weeks for that to turn. What junior college you go to, Mike? Um, I go to high school. Really? At nineteen? Yeah. It's time to wake up, though. It's time to do a pregnancy test as soon as possible. Once she's missed her period, has she missed her period yet? Um, no. Get, Mike, uh, hold get on. the morning after. Hold on, everybody. What are you doing in high school at nineteen? Well, have that... a baby. Oh. Isn't that too old? I'm taking home economics courses. No, you're not, you goofball. No one takes home ec at 19 in high school. He's either out of work, I know he's living at home, and he's going to junior college, and he just doesn't want to admit it because he knows that's my litmus test for morons. <laughs> Listen, Mike, don't get anyone pregnant, do you hear me? It's going to be the worst day of your life. There'll be no more uh, Hendrix and weed. Christ's sake. Realize we have guys, and let me tell you, Mike in our fa uh, is uh, father of the year in this country. we got guys like Mike raising kids in this country. Oh, that's scary. Hey, do they have that RU486 in England? Sure. Are you what? The abortion pill. The abortion pill? Is that the morning after pill? No. It's well, I different. haven't heard of it. No, it is, it is a morning after pill, too. Hold it's on. different. Really? Sweetheart, you've, you've heard of the morning after pill, but you haven't heard of RU486? I personally it, haven't it, heard it of it. It has a name, I think, in England. No. These things have names. It's called, uh, like, uh, Babs Away. <laughs> No uh, diapers. No diapers. No diapers. <laughs> no, I haven't heard of it at all. I don't know. Really? About it. Uh, it comes from France. You know all the crap that comes out of France. I don't. It's right across the uh, Rhine. Well, I don't go over there looking for abortion pills. What's it across there? The English Channel. <laughs> the Channel. Doesn't the Thames run into the English Channel somewhere? Mm. All right. Uh, Listen, I didn't go to Europe. What are you I, I grew up in like? North Hollywood. Corey, what's going on? Yeah, um... I found that uh, woolly hair thing about Jesus. Oh, yeah, yeah. What's it say? It's in Matthew. <laughs> I'm trying to find the exact, uh, the exact paragraph, mm -hmm. but I have a re religious studies class. I don't believe, you know, you know, in all that garbage, but you have to take the, right. the class. 
Right. And um, well, where do you where do you do? Go to you go to Pepperdine or something? No, uh, Cal State Northridge. Really? Yeah. yeah but they don't make you take that. Yeah. And, well, you kind of have to because mm -hmm. it fills a re requirement, and it's either that or like lawn bowling one hundred and four. Uh, and by the way, I don't mean to offend you, but Cal State Northridge is the junior college of four year schools. Oh, thank you. Ed. Oh, you know it is. It's got some good departments. I didn't take the SATs. I, I, I almost got into that school. All right, Corey, what, so what's the paragraph? I'm, I'm still trying to find. I didn't think she was going to put me on, like, right All away. right, I'll tell you what. We'll put you on hold for a second. Uh -huh. Find Matthew. Find the part about Jesus having the woolly hair uh -huh. and uh, being hung and uh, call us back, would you? Okay. All right. All right. Hold on a second. All right, no, I mean, we're putting you on hold. We'll, we'll, we'll punch you up in a second. All right. All right, beautiful. See, if he went to uh, UCLA or Berkeley, would have found it by now. I see. Northridge. The reading skills are better, huh? It's not really a school. I mean, it's sort of a four-year school, but not quite. Blake. Yeah. You're 16. Yeah. What's going on there? One of my friends is trying to get me to take pornographic pictures of her, and her boyfriend is trying to get me to take video cameras. Blake, laugh for us. Laugh? Just give us a little chuckle. Oh, it's kind of, like, hard to do. To All right, let me see if I can coax it out of you. Hey, Blake. Yeah? You know how to make antifreeze? Oh. Take away her shawl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was pretty funny, huh, Blake? Sure. Uh, Blake is so far gone, he can't even laugh. Okay. Well, I'm not sure if he should have laughed at that. Uh, <laughs> all right. Blake, you smoke a lot of weed? No. Really? I used to, not much Okay, anymore. well, listen, when you're 16 and you used to smoke a lot of weed, uh, you, smoke a lot. you smoke a lot of weed. Come on, he's got a serious problem here. They want him to film them doing porn stuff, and he feels <laughs> that the boundary's really dodgy, and it's totally inappropriate. Correct. Wow. And that's what he needs to assert. That's so I that think period. that you've just got to say that, that you're that not up for it at all, uh, unless you, you are. I mean, I'm, well, I think he's not attracted Adam looks to the like girl. he wants their well, number. Well, actually, the girl's, like, hot. Oh, really? Then why wouldn't you want to watch this? <laughs> well, because the guy isn't. Okay, okay. Well, like, well, listen, just, then it's don't do it. Just do some, this some separate shots. <laughs> don't get involved with this and nuttiness, please. Yeah, and let me tell you something. Um, part of screwing your life up is getting involved with screwed up people. Yeah. Man, if I learned this. My life has never been better than when I left all my old uh, moron buddies in North Hollywood. And yet they and still start, hang out of your house. Well, they're working on it. Do you hear that? They swarm around it. No, they hang out there. They do a little work. I pay them. They steal some uh, porno and food, and that's <laughs> it. But the point is, is I start hanging around with my new moron buddies who make more money, and my life's never been better. Stop hanging around. And all my uh, old idiot buddies, you know what their problems are? They still hang out with each other. They're bad influences on themselves and on, on each other. And they, they hang out with the same uh, band of idiots. And uh, I don't know why that is, but believe me, you will become who you hang out with eventually. That's why parents freak out about who the kids hang out with. Right. They and say, show me your best friend and I'll tell you <clears throat> who you are. Oh, oh really? Uh, hey. That's solid. Dude. Solid. I like that. True. Siobhan's full of wisdom. She really hey, is. My Full grandfather's a psychiatrist. What do you expect? Piss vinegar and wisdom. What? I like What's that. What's that first bet? The vinegar is what you put on the uh, the uh, the bangers <laughs> or the uh, fish and chips. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, Kurt. Kurt's twenty-seven. Kurt's, Kurt's been on hold for eighty-five minutes. Maybe asleep. Hey, Siobhan. Yes. My uh, girlfriend that was from Hounslow. She once tried to make me uh, some uh, biscuits, some scones. And right. she let the milk get rotten. She said you got to let the milk rot before you Ooh, do it correctly. That's not very good at all. Never heard of that one. They didn't know that one? You don't, she lived in Hounslow. You don't cook much, though, do you? I do. You do? I do. What do you make? Like a boiled uh, rack of lamb? <laughs> no, I'm a vegetarian, boiled actually. Boiled pot roast? It depends who's coming over for dinner, actually. Really? And then I design the, the food around that. You do, you do like Indian food? Um, if I've got someone that requests Indian food, then mm -hmm. yeah, it depends what kind of vibe I'm trying to create. It mm -hmm. depends if I want them to hang out or if I want them to have a quick snack and What get would out. you make me if I was coming over like that oh, day? Oh, now. Uh, well, first of all, I have to... I do get gassy. I gotta say that. Oh, because you like farting? Yeah. Okay, then I'd do a bean casserole. Oh, that's full good. Full of pulses and you could fart away and oh, could laugh about it and do laugh and fart, fart and make passionate and love and then I'd fart some more. candles around the farts and <laughs> yeah. be away. Yeah, let's, uh, hey, Drew... Yeah. Who are we speaking to, Corey? And let's see if he's got an answer yet. 
Hey, Corey? Yeah, I'm still working hard. See? I'm and telling you. that. give a Northridge guy at least five minutes. <laughs> uh, and no kidding. All, All right. right. Hang on. Hey, keep hanging on. I know keep there's something about the wool and hair or something in there. What do you want to go five. through? Five. Todd. Yeah. You're 23. Yes. What's up? Um, I was talking to my parents. I just called my mom today just to kind of talk to her. And so I've got other things going on. And she told me. She put me on hold. And, uh said, oh, hey, I'll have to call you back. So she called back, like, you know, 10 minutes later or whatever, and so she has hepatitis C. This was some new information for her? Yeah, she just found out from the doctor on mm -hmm. the other line. Had she had a transfusion or something one time in her life? Uh, in 68. Yeah, she that's where she got it. to me that yeah. that's what the doctor told her, and, and like, that it only yeah. comes from blood transfusion. Well, it doesn't only come, it, it is, comes from, obviously, IV drug use, if you're sharing needles, and it, it's probably, a, I, I firmly believe it is a sexually transmitted disease also. Uh, I guess her doctor said it wasn't. It, it is. But, it's debatable, know. but... I want to go on record and say it is. Because I've seen yeah. some cases where I'm, that's the only way it could have been transmitted. Wives yeah. of patients with hepatitis C, this sort of thing. Oh. And uh, pretty clearly, is, though it's not, it's, it's not as uh, infective as many other uh, sexually transmitted diseases, it is possibly yeah. transmitted that way. That was going to be the name of mono, that we're going to call it hepatitis C. What oh, needs settled with mono. Here's the thing with hepatitis C, is that it very often causes <laughs> chronic hepatitis, and it can cause cirrhosis and liver cancer. Right. In, a, in a significant percentage. And can all that stuff just uh, get going and take hold without you being aware of it? Yes, it's very Thir 30 right. years can go by and you don't yes. know that your liver's being Absolutely. attacked? Tell Nina. Absolutely. Oh, boy. My and mom, I guess, just in like the last couple of days was like feeling not quite right. And so she went to the doctor wow. and she's got really good health insurance, so she doesn't have to worry about that. Mm. But And the doctor did a physical and whatever and says, oh yeah, and called her today and said, you've got hepatitis C. Well, she needs a liver biopsy and then she's going to be put on a medicine called interferon. And interferon has about a 30 to 50 percent potential of uh, eradicating this, slowing it down or stopping it. What she told me um, today, and this is kind of why I'm calling, because she used to drink a lot. Mm. I mean, a lot. And, and by the way, interesting. That's probably why there's been such a delay in her diagnosis. That the liver profile of a chronic alcoholic is the same as hepatitis C. In fact, I missed it. I've missed a couple of cases of hepatitis C where I just made the assumption that what I was seeing was hepatitis oh. Oh, from alcohol. Don't blame yourself. Man. And uh, it took a while to get the diagnosis. And you're not supposed to drink, C. are you? When you've got any of the heps. It makes it right. It, and it Drew was drunk it. himself during the diagnosis. Hide so. the whiskey. So what's up, Todd? Um, well, I'm kind of wondering because she was t saying that there was only a three to five percent chance of it really doing anything else other than it just being there that mm. it really causing any cirrhosis of the liver no that's liver that's cancer. inaccurate it's it's a little bit higher than that All right but don't scare the lad it, it's higher than that and she needs to she needs Take treatment care of it. she needs treatment she needs a liver biopsy she needs treatment have you got any support time i'm punching her yeah Todd, yeah. have you got any support from friends or family or anyone you can talk to about it? Well, I live with my girlfriend. We're pretty close. It's just, I have a, kind of a strange relationship with my parents. Mm. I was adopted when I was nine. Mm. Um, my birth mom and had this boyfriend who used to beat me and sexually... Oh, my God. We're oh, going right. into another area here. Well, yeah, that's deep. We certainly are. Yeah, to the point where the, the court put me up for adoption. I mean, the state oh, took boy. me away. Uh, when I was about. What, are you okay four. now? I mean, how 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 do you function? You okay? I mean, I I feel like I function okay. I mean, I've got a job and I hold steady jobs. The relationships are pretty stable. No. They're stable. I mean, every now and then weird things crop up. <coughs> so your your biological mom and your stepdad. Your Not stepdad, stepdad did this to you? Her boyfriend. Oh, her boyfriend. Oh, yeah, this guy who she was just kind of living with. It is with. Uh, it is absolutely it it defies logic. To me, and, and it's even beyond, I can't think of a strong enough word for mom bringing a guy in the house and the guy just is sexually assaulting or physically abusing. Or both. Or both. A, a child in general, but a child that's not even their child. It's just they just come into the house and start beating on something. I mean, the audacity, the temerity. Is it's this just, the mom we're talking about with the hepatitis C? No, that was my birth mom. No, right, this is the adopted mom. But the healthiest no, thing about all this is that you're able to talk about it, that you've come to terms with it, you're not suppressing it and taking it out on children yourself or, or not doing anything about it. You're, Are you? You've realized it, and that, that's like the first well, stage. Well, we don't know. He could be a molester. The first stage, no, no way. I don't, he doesn't, he sounds like he's uh, really together. Uh, Are you? 
am I do doing anything to what to kids or the client that way? As far as I know, no. Okay. I mean, right. I really don't have a lot of interaction with. Uh, Did you get some therapy? I, as a result of the um, the court place adoption and everything they put me through years and years all of right there we go good. okay good Keep i don't talking know about if it ever did any good because we just kind of sat no, there it did. oh boy believe me it did <laughs> it's kind of like listen we talk to people that have been through what you've been through on a nightly basis and they don't sound half as sane as you yeah they don't <laughs> believe the me the feeling we get is totally different. made a difference right. you are like a bomb that's been diffused it's like uh, when you go visit these old forts and they got these old iron cannons and you go hey, i'm gonna take a picture i I'm going to straddle it and take a picture. That's what you're like, as opposed to, uh, you know, climbing through some barbed wire and getting onto a real facility and looking at what they have. It's yeah. a much different feeling, yeah. even though uh, it may look the same. Yeah. And Todd didn't get that vibe at all. No. I wanted yeah. to put my That's ear by, uh, so confident. by the end of it, like, uh, yeah. like a gag. Yeah. No, Todd sounds like he's seriously getting himself together. Oh. But the thing is to oh, keep talking about it. Oh, these and, um, here's a Here's a good question, though. Yeah. Here's a real question. Uh, how many other uh, guys or gals did uh, the boyfriend get to over the course of his uh, uh, sexual career, abuse yeah. and physical abuse That's career? Right. And to me, uh, people talk about rehab and, 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 and confinement and all that kind of stuff. Guys like that need to be put down, destroyed, like uh, one of those donkeys totally. you tried to drag around needed to be destroyed after it broke a hip. We do, not we? It would. Listen, Line them all up. Here's, here's the deal. Uh, we are, as uh, society, is just sort of a big colony. And there's, uh, if, if one of the little animals in the petting zoo starts going nuts and attacking the other animals and uh, attacking the offspring. And can't and, be stopped. Or yeah. won't be stopped. Uh, we got to put them down. The problem is, it's a chain as well. It's often those that have been abused. That's go right, on to and that's why I that's feel that's sorry the, putting yeah. them down because <laughs> I know something happened to them before. But the point right. is, is they're now adults. They, they're monsters. And it, something needs to be done. But then we mustn't confuse and think that every person that's been abused is then going to go on to abuse because that's really unfair. Cause a lot of people right, but I'd have to kill them anyway just to play it safe. I, I think. Okay, we'll send how them about here. how about the first step being Line them up. that our society. Um, acknowledge this as a reality and then begin uh, sort of managing its rules accordingly. What you know, does that mean? Well, I mean, it's like, for instance, you, the women that have been abused and the sorts of things they choose to do, you're disappointed always to find out that this is a person in pain. You'd right. Ra you'd rather just applaud their performances on porn and uh, in yeah, video. That's true. <laughs> i got to go watch that tonight, so don't ruin it for me, That's please. the point. <laughs> that we, need to, we need to deal with the reality of the behavior. You're going to go right. limp, aren't you now? Look, you've mm, upset him. Don't look. worry. He's lost his boner. I lost my... I lost my wheelie. My wheelie's got <laughs> new starch. <laughs> but don't worry, it'll be back. Hey, Corey? Yeah. Um, all right, listen, <laughs> you, you uh, theologian, you. Did you find anything in the effing Bible or not? No, not yet. Oh, for Christ's sake. Did I tell you that Northridge? Anyone could get into Northridge. Uh, you have to have a pole. Yeah. you, you got to have at least a um, 2.1 GPA. And Hey. Uh, Adam, what's up? Hey, you're 17. Yep. Uh, i got a question here for Dr. Drew. Right. Okay, I'll give you my full story here so you can get the information you need to probably help me. Um, about six months ago, I started doing pot and acid pretty regularly. And uh, things started getting pretty bad. My parents found out, and I got put in a psych ward for a week. I got out of there. I got put in six-month intensive outpatient rehab. And I started seeing, like, a psychiatrist or psychologist, I don't know, and he diagnosed me at first with uh, manic depression, uh -huh. put me on Zoloft, and that wasn't working at all. It was keeping me up until 4 in the morning. So he reevaluated me, and then he diagnosed me with mixed bipolar syndrome, and He's putting me now on Neurontin and uh, Depakote. Mm -hmm. What's mixed bipolar? Uh, good question. I don't know exactly. What did they call you before? Before he said I was more of a depressed. depressed. Yeah, there's different types. Bipolar manic, bipolar mixed, bipolar depressed. He, he's saying that like my highs and lows are, are, aren't exactly classic bipolar. Right. Okay, all right. But, well, I, I'll tell you what. I am very skeptical of making a diagnosis. Well, I have seen hallucinogens and stimulants induce bipolar illness. I'm totally convinced of that. Um, nonetheless, bipolar by any other name is still bipolar. In other words, you either have it or you don't, no matter how you got it. Well, isn't and bipolar mixed? I mean, it's got to be mixed. That's what, it's, the, it's what the title implies. Yeah, but some, some people have never had a manic episode. I think the reason they classified me as Well, bipolar. then they're depressed. 
but but you're not bipolar. But if there's family history of bipolar illness and all the individuals had so far as a depression, you might suspect this is a bipolar depression. Right. Don't don't cloud the issue with um, reality. With reality. Yeah. Yes. You know. Uh, I hate that. Um, but Ray, uh, look, you know, so so it probably was induced. It may well have been induced by substances. And uh, you, any other evidence you've had brain injury, like you've seen trailers or anything like that? I actually, yeah, that's what I was going to call about. Ever since I was put on the Neurontin, when I like move my head from left to right for the past two days, I see trailers, and I felt like basically I've been high twenty four hours a day, or like tripping sort of. Wow, how interesting! I and you're on Neurontin and Depakote. Yeah, and Depakote. I'm on like. 1,800 milligrams of Neurontin and about 1,200 milligrams of Depakote. That's pretty good size doses. I don't... Well, are you asking a very complicated question? If you weren't seeing trailers before you were put on those medications, it's hard for me to imagine how they could induce a phenomenon from illicit substances. All right. he, he's got to go back and talk to his yeah. psychiatrist, though, right? I think it may just plainly be a side effect of the medication. Well, that'd be nice. Yeah. I mean, because he didn't smoke that much weed or do that much acid, did he? Yeah. Who knows how much I, I read some study the other day when I was going on the politically incorrect show. I just I just pulled out the journal just to see what, what was in there about pot. There were lo and behold, there was an article about doing MRIs on seventeen year olds who had been smoking before the age of sixteen. Mm -hmm. And males before the age of sixteen that smoked even moderate marijuana had shrinkage of their right frontal lobe. Well, that's that's the one you don't need, right? That's the one you really need. Serious? So judgment, impulse control, oh, reasoning. Really? Motivation. Yeah. Yeah, that was that one guy, though. That wasn't all of them. It was interesting. It was just the males, though. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah, you chicks are home free. <laughs> Dee Dee, you're for legalization of marijuana, right? You're from uh, from uh, Southern <laughs> California. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah. I haven't really thought about it, actually. Yeah? I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, too busy smoking weed to really sit down and contemplate the issue. I was smoking six months ago. Oh, I boy. Really deal with that. <laughs> you're not getting up at four tomorrow to work out, seriously, yeah, are you? Yeah, yeah. Why four? Um, so that I can get it done and over with, so I don't have to worry about it. Why not six? Because my trainer is not available. Uh, oh, your trainer's huh. not available at four, is he? Yeah, you bet he is. <laughs> no, he's into the coke. That's an all-nighter. <laughs> no, oh, yes, please. No, he's like a little Buddha guy. He's uh, just like this little, you ever read it, that, the guy you put the battery in, he uh, keeps going. <laughs> That's kind of oh, I hate people like that. But he goes to bed at like eight o'clock at night, so. No, now I hate him more. <laughs> <laughs> to wake him up and kick him in the nuts. <laughs> Drew, you still working out? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. I gave all that up. We're going to go to break. Did you ever start? All right. We're going to break. <laughs> we'll be back. This is Love Line. Love Line will be right back. <laughs> This is Alice. And Dunstan. From Chumbawamba. And you're listening to Love Line. With Adam Carolla. And Dr. Drew. Yes, you is. Chumbawamba, the anarchist. <laughs> I heard where they were telling people that they should steal their records uh, from the stores and uh, not pay for them. And, uh, I don't know, some... Uh, Tower Records or something had to like pull them off the shelf because they were scared people could come in and start uh, keystering the Chumbawamba records. You know what I love about people like that? Uh, they want everyone to steal the records, but um, then if they stop getting paid because everyone is stealing the records, they get really pissed. There you go. It's like sort of a one-sided uh, anarchy. Mm -hmm. and we were talking to Chumbawamba and they were like, the man is holding everyone down. They were like, who's the man? Uh, the man, I, I said, you know, the economic system is in place, and, and that's about it. You, if you make seven bucks an hour and you suck, then you'll make seven bucks an hour for the rest of your life. And if you're good and you work hard, then you move your way up. Yep. And that's about it. There's, It's sort of nature's law. And by the way, no one really laid it out and created it. It just happened this way. It's like when people say... Uh, oh, you know, little girls wear dresses and boys play with uh, sticks and guns because the society forces them to. It's like, my, my question to those people is, whose plan was this a billion years ago? Who decided this, or did it just happen? And, and then and, how can you argue with and that? And the other side of that is, uh, another element to that is, you take your, your young boys and, and try to force them not to pick up guns and sticks, and uh, it ain't going to happen. Right. They're going to pick them up. Everything becomes a sword. Everything. Especially the penis? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then Especially. when you pee, it's like the extendo sword. That's like the first move Ray you do. sword. Yeah, you pee with the other guy. You're three musketeers. You're all uh, whiz in the same toilet. <laughs> yeah, I got to do that. You know, you only do it now when you're drunk as an adult, but I think you should revisit that sober. Mike, let's do that later on in the evening. 
Yeah, I'm going to drink some more coffee. We'll do the uh, Three Musketeers, Drew. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dee Dee Pfeiffer's here from For Your Love, NBC, Tuesday night, 8.30. And um, who else is in this uh, besides uh, Holly Robinson? Pete? Holly Robinson P plays Melina and uh, D.W. Moffat. Oh, D.W. So, yeah, he plays Don't my know. husband. Oh. oh, he's fantastic. <laughs> what was he in? He, uh, what was he in? Uh, he was on a series called Chicago Songs, I believe. Oh. Um, yeah. I actually, you know, that's why I don't feel bad you guys haven't watched the series. I don't watch TV. You oh, know, you don't? Unless it's on Oh, no, National we watch Geographic other things. We watch a Channel. lot of other things. We I just don't watch really, that show. And no. the same thing with reading. I, and that's why I don't know the numbers. I only, unless it's in National Geographic, I really don't know what it is. Uh, who else is in it? Adafi Blackman. Oh. Tamala Jones. Uh-huh. James Lejeur. Holly Robinson. Jamie, yeah. Yeah. James. Uh, <laughs> James, baby. I call him Jamie, though. Yeah, yeah I'm sure you'll love that. We're close. <laughs> All right, the show's, uh, listen, uh, Anne gave it the big thumbs up, and that's uh, good enough for us. And she can smell a hit, just like Drew's wife. She likes the Stephen J. Canal shows. And Drew's <laughs> wife, she likes all those uh, Bayou Heat. Uh, what's the story of that one? It's a uh, really good-looking um, um, private eye or uh, investigator for the uh, Louisiana Police Department. Hooks up the, another really good-looking investigator, but she's a chick. There's a little sexual tension there, but they never get it on. <laughs> Oh, Susan, that, that is uh, Drew's wife, Susan, sorry. Uh, Brooke. Yeah. You're 15. Yeah. What's going on there? Well, my mom and my little brother just left for Oklahoma, like yesterday. And I could, and my mom, they um, had a connection in Phoenix. And I could, and my little brother knows that um, my boyfriend and I are going out, but my mom doesn't. It's like a secretly going out. And... My little brother told my mom, like, I knew as soon as they stepped on the plane. And he just pissed me off because, like... Mm -hmm. Well, we didn't quite get it. <laughs> you knew what? That, okay, my mom just found out ye yesterday that I was going out with someone. Oh, your brother ratted you out? Yes, big time. <laughs> okay. And? And then he also said that we kissed, but I just said it was like a peck on the lips. How old's your brother? Eleven. Well, what do you want? He's 11. Isn't that what you do when you're 11? You rat people out? I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's a stoolie. Well, what's kid. your mom doing? What's she saying now? Well, she was really pissed off when she called from Phoenix. But, like, this morning before I left for school, she she didn't say anything. She just had said have a good day, a good day at school. And about a couple, a couple hours ago, she called to wish me a good night, and she didn't say anything, but I can't really tell that she's ticked. All right, listen, that's enough. <laughs> We have people with real problems on this well, show. Uh, right. She talked to her twice. She said, I right, have a good day. Hey, she called and have a good night. First of all, mom is, mom is involved and concerned. Great. Yeah. Uh, she's concerned about who you're dating. Great. Uh, the guy probably is a real jerk that you'll be embarrassed if you ever dated in the first place. Uh, <laughs> all right. You'll learn that. All right. But thank God she's in there trying to help you make good choices. So, uh. Dee Dee, were there uh, a lot of guys hanging around the Pfeiffer clan? Oh boy! Uh, yeah. <laughs> we uh, well, Lori and Michelle and I, we we definitely dated. Yeah. Uh, my dad didn't like anybody we walk, that walks the door. Good man. Did, he had three daughters, and there was nobody. Three great looking. Three. I have not seen Lori, have I? No. Uh, no, but you will. She, she's, she's good looking. Beautiful. Really? Uh, she's a brunette, tall. Better than you and Michelle. She's much prettier than I am. Yes. Really? And she's different. Michelle's blonde and blonde and blue eyed, and Lori's brown hair, and brown eyes, mm. and brown. The mailman got it on eyelashes. there somewhere. Huh? <laughs> I gotta say, she doesn't really. Well, she looks, she looks like me, but with darker features, taller, uh, more a little more blessed in areas. Um, oh yeah! Wow! And uh, she's like stunning. Yeah, she's she's, she's a homemaker. Well, gotta get her out of that house. I say she's a she's a housewife, and she hates it when I say that. Really? She says when you say that in public, tell them I'm a homemaker. There's a difference. What did uh, you know? Um, she's young. She's got two boys. She doesn't want to feel. How old is she? Um. Ooh, Roughly, I mean. thirty-two. She has two two kids, right? Thirty-two. She's thirty-two. Thirty-two, two kids. She's younger than you. Yeah. Wow, you look pretty good. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Thank you. Yeah, you know, um, uh, one of the examples I use for uh, how uh, any man can cheat. I think I may have used it on the air before. I got to figure out this. Any man name. can cheat. Did I say that? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I meant. Here's what I'm. Would you shut up? Let me Will finish you, for a second. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Thanks, Mike. Hey, 
Boy, it's, uh, it's like we're uh, communicating here uh, through uh, telepathy. Shut, the, shut Drew's mic off before I even had to ask him. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer was like, I don't know, what is she, who is she going out with uh, that guy who was in short circuit uh, one through five? Uh, Fisher Stevens. Fisher Stevens. Now, nothing against uh, Fisher, but um, he, he don't look as nice as Michelle. He's got kind of a big schnoz on him, and I'm better looking than he is. He had a huge personality. Oh, he's hung. I didn't say that. Is that what you're saying? I have no idea. That's code for hung. I, have I know you sisters talk. <laughs> oh, yes, that's radio. That's radio for hung. But this uh, Fisher Stevens, he's, he's not a real attractive guy. He, he oh, true. I wish you'd seen anything on TV or in, in the theaters in the last 40 years so I could uh, let you know who this guy is. But I think uh, he was going out with Michelle. They weren't married, were they? They were like almost married, living together. They're pretty serious. Just living together, yeah. Well, that's serious. That's serious. And he cheated on her. And I thought, what? oh, yes. You didn't know that? He did not. He did so. Did you read that somewhere? No, no, I like know. You believe everything you read? No, I don't read. Drew will tell you that. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> I got that my ear to the pavement. Sure. I got that from Rooster or Huggy Bear. I know he cheated on her. Who? Yes. Who's Rooster or Huggy Bear? She wants to know. Rooster, oh, yeah. uh, those are my men on the street. The guys who wear the uh, uh, big Panama hats okay. and the full-length purple dusters. Okay. They go buy Greaser Palm with a 20. They tell me what's going on. <laughs> Oh, just go along with me. Okay. He, he did yeah. cheat on her, didn't he? Not that I know of. Oh, oh but yeah. But you don't it. talk about everything. You're so busy talking about his tremendous you know, listen, penis. You know, honestly, you didn't I, have I, time I'm to squeeze this in. On me, okay? I'm to be worried about my sister's love life. All right. I, I heard the guy cheated. That's uh, that's all. And uh, and all I my answer to that is, uh, if this guy can cheat, anybody can cheat. And it, right. and what I'm saying is, is he's with uh, one of the most beautiful women in the world. Well, I give him a good five. And a guy can do this. Let, let's hypothetically, we'll say uh, he didn't cheat. But guys can still do this. A guy could be with Michelle Pfeiffer for three need, years. Still, still need to cheat. Three yeah. years into yeah. it, he could be in Chicago on yeah. business and go, Oh, look at that cocktail waitress's ass. But you are very, very, very right. This is true. It doesn't really matter you know, if they're with the most beautiful woman, the most talented right. woman, the most special or right woman. If a man has it in the cheat, he's going right. to cheat. And they can get over all that beautiful, special, right stuff in, a, mm -hmm. in about six weeks so if it's the right They can justify what kind. they're doing no matter what. <laughs> if they're going to do it, they're gonna, you know, they'll do it. Well, all right. men have the urge to do it, but not all men will do it. Exactly. Right. Some guys are tired, well, like Drew. I hate to make these two women have the urge, too, but, they, don't, yeah, but they more often don't ever you know, do it. I, I really think the, the biology, I mean, the, look at the history of the species. I mean, the yeah, biology is much true. more there for the man. Oh, it is. Yeah, guys. Nick, Drew, I want you with me if I ever get caught cheating. Nick. Hello, Adam and Drew and Didi. Yes, Hi. Nick. Uh, uh, actually, I got a uh, kind of a controversial question for you. Uh, my brother-in-law is uh, is gay, and uh, me and my wife now have a 12-month-old son. And uh, I was wondering uh, how you guys feel about perhaps him babysitting. Oh no, you can't leave him alone any more than you could leave your 12-month-old daughter with a heterosexual. I mean, that's trouble. <laughs> Once you're hetero, you're hetero. Once you're gay, you're gay. And you gotta, you gotta put it in. I mean, what are you gonna do, right? Well, uh, actually, like, I uh, right. So, I so in this case, he, Nick can't leave his what is it, his, his son, with a female either. No, she'll, she'll have, have sex, sex with him. Right. Oh. <laughs> but but that will not be as traumatizing to the child. Oh, I don't know. You don't think so? No, I don't know. What do you do? Do you have like a robot babysit your kids? Are you just chain them to the radiator and leave a bowl of food? Well, I, I've heard in the past you discussed that you thought that it's kind of suspicious sometimes, yeah. uh, Adam. What's that? Well, you saying that the possibility of uh, young homosexual men, the possibility of them being molested or sexually abused. Of them having been molested. That's mm. a, that is, yeah. that well, that's is. an interesting point, yes. So, you know, uh, you know uh, I understand that you would never leave your son with anybody who has been molested or sexually abused. Well, that's, uh, that's an interesting point. Okay, here's what Nick is saying. We get a lot of callers who call this show. They say they're uh, 16 and they're gay. Or they're 16 and they're bisexual. And, we, and they're confused. And we say, what happened? And they say, my uncle touched me when I was four. Now I'm gay. So yeah. uh, a lot of the callers who call this show, uh, who call in saying they're gay or they're um, bisexual, have had uh, something go wrong in the past. But these are people who are calling the show right. as well. Right. You know what I mean? Right. It's a selected, they're calling because they have a problem. It's a selected population. Um, 
There's nothing about his sexual orientation that would preclude his babysitting, okay? Right. Um, if you, if he is a kind of person that has had a traumatic past and has a lot of chaos in his life, you probably that's not the kind of person, regardless of the sexual orientation, you want to leave with a little baby. Yeah, it's probably better that you get the gay guy, too, because a straight guy would be like, all right, listen, I'm going to pin this note to your shirt. I want you to go down to the Dales Jr. You get me a 12-pack of Mickey's Big Mouth and a pack of butts. Now here's ten bucks. I want some change. I'm gonna be watching. Uh, I'm gonna be watching uh, the monster truck rally. You hurry back. Don't you think guys uh, could tend to be even a little more irresponsible? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't. Like you know, every time I hear these stories about um, somebody got their kid taken away because they left their kid in the car or something like that, I always think that's why I'd make a horrible parent. Because if I had a kid and I had to run down to the corner, I would leave the kid in the car. Ooh. You oh, what? Know. Oh yes. No. I wouldn't turn the no, heat wouldn't. on and, and, and uh, shut no, the windows wouldn't. or no, anything. You no, you wouldn't. You think you would. You, you think you would. It could you happen never... that one time. I could do it. No. You could do it I to could. a five-year-old probably, but that's about it. Five-year-old doesn't even have to ride in the car. <laughs> he rides like I rode. My dad used to strap a lawn chair to the uh, roof of the car like he was uh, bringing home a moose. <laughs> no. All right, so he's all right to go with the gay guy, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. You just, um, you just is, is there a way you can... Uh, Check your kid out physically, Drew? What do you mean? You know, see like, anything happen to him? Yeah. Ooh. What? You know my idea about um, crotch-sniffing dogs? Oh, here you go. Dee Dee, you're going to love this idea. <laughs> oh, God. Let's talk uh, about it after the break. All right, right? we're going to go to break. But uh, don't let me forget this idea. Because right. i got an idea for dogs. The crotch-sniffing dog idea? Well, this is good, <laughs> but wait till you hear it. There's more. Write that down, Drew. We'll be back with Dee Dee Pfeiffer. This is Charles Fleischer. No, this is Charles Fleischer. This is Charles Fleischer. This is Charles Fleischer, and you're listening to Love Line with Adam Corolla and Dr. Drew. No gale, I love those fellows. Oh, take my tortic and my now in the marine dolo. Hey, this Love Line. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Fax number 310 854 4455. I'm uh, Ace Carrera. And that's Dr. Drew. D.D. Pfeiffer's here. For Your Love is the name of the show. 8.30, Tuesday nights on NBC. All right, Drew, you out of it tonight? Not really. Oh, really? You're shaking your head. Yeah, I'm just, I'm sleepy, but I'm not out of it, you know? Sometimes mm -hmm. it's kind of be... I'm out of it, but I'm not sleepy. Yeah. All right. All right, we'll be great. <laughs> that's, yeah. All right, so I wanted to finish my uh, thought about dogs. I had this good idea. And actually, now uh, people are working on this idea because... Um, I come up with them, and I think uh, they filter through society for a while, and then scientists pick them up. I don't know if they monitor the show or not, but um, <laughs> I was uh, I was thinking about these dogs at the airport, you know. They got these dogs. They sniff out uh, explosives. Mm -hmm. They sniff out uh, backyard fruit that's being transported and sausage and all sorts of stuff right. like that. They smell uh, cocaine, marijuana, whatever it is. They can train these dogs to sniff out anything. It's an interesting process. They get these dogs from the pound, and they don't really look for any particular breed because apparently there's no breed that sniffs any better than the other. They just look for a certain hyperness, and they show them this towel. It's just a regular, like a washcloth that's been rolled up a few times and tied with a rubber band, and they get them into this towel. And then eventually, when, once they get enough into this towel toy, you know, they roll it up and they throw it, and the dog gets it and brings it back, they start rubbing the scent of the uh, cocaine or the marijuana or whatever it is on this towel. So when the dog is busting you at the airport, it thinks, and the reason it's scratching, because I was wondering, I always thought, I can understand they smell the weed, and you'd think the pot-smoking dog, uh, pot-sniffing dogs would slow down a little bit and have to have, <laughs> have to like have a snack break or something <laughs> after smelling weed at the airport all day, but you ever see pictures of these dogs? They start clawing and you thought, how could they train these dogs? They think they're clawing to get their the towel. towel. Yeah. And they always got to throw them the towel once they uh, open the suitcase with a kilo of heroin in it. <laughs> then the dog just goes running away with his towel. <laughs> and meanwhile, some guy gets 135 years. It, it's so ironic that in this dog's head, it's like, hey, I got, I got my 99 cents worth of, of uh, towel. towel and, <laughs> and this poor bastard is going to prison for the rest of his life. But anyway, these dogs can sniff anything. Man, I mean, you can uh, take coffee grounds, put a joint in it, and, and weld it into a truck fender. It can still smell it. So I thought, how about using some of these dogs to sniff out the STDs and other things like this, you know? Like, Sexually transmitted diseases. Yeah. You go to the gynecologist. I've not been to the gynecologist, but I know what goes on. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a little love line lingo there. 
<laughs> she just had an image there. I, she just had a visual. I do visualize what people tell me. I'm sorry. Right. And, and you know, you go to the guy in college, you got to get up there in the stirrups, you got to drop your drawers, mm -hmm. there's all sorts of feeling and grabbing and poking oh, and lunging. All sorts of stuff. All right? sorts of stuff going on there. <laughs> And sometimes it's just to see if there's a little bit of discharge or perhaps uh, some cancerous cells or something like that or maybe a sexually transmitted disease. Mm -hmm. Let the dog sniff this out right in, in the, the waiting, waiting room. room. Right in the waiting room. Don't, oh. uh, uh, don't get up on the stirrup. Just wear underwear and wear and like dress. a skirt. And let the dog, you know, go from patient to patient. And if it starts scratching or barking or something, you know, you have to stay. The other girls will let you leave. Now, right. and, and they've done tests with these dogs who can now actually smell out, uh, what is it, melanoma, the skin cancer? Right. They can really? smell the cancer cells. Because yeah. everything smells different that comes sure. out of you, right? What comes out of your ass smells different than what comes out of your ear, I right? I hope so. Oh, yes. <laughs> I really hope so. I've done extensive research. <laughs> I'm here to tell you. <laughs> and and, and a, dog, a dog's sense of smell is so keen that they can do this, and now they're looking into this. So a dog could whiff this out, but uh, I'm also now expanding my dog's role and thinking that they could smell out some form of molestation. Oh. Like you drop the kid off at the in-law's house, at the grandparents' house, you're a little suspicious that there's been a little pokey, proddy or mm -hmm. something. Dog gives it a sniff. Could be a little uh, semen there somewhere. Could be uh, what else, Dro? I don't know. I'm just trying so to imagine what you do with the towel. <laughs> <laughs> Where you hide the towel? No, no. How do you, what do you rub on the towel to oh. put the dog into it? I'm just yeah, yeah, I could do that. women with, like, dogs between Here's these what... nip-by dogs oh, yeah. in waiting rooms. But have to get dog for each but disease. But it's less humiliating than hopping up on the table, isn't it? And think about it. Well, You there's... get to keep your panties on. <laughs> you get to wear pants. But some women might, like, enjoy and not want to, like, leave the room, even if they didn't, like, you know, test positive or something, see? All right. Well, there's always a side effect. There's a, <laughs> there's always a downside to this thing, but uh, we could certainly... I Actually, I saw movies like that that make them in Europe where the women really love the dogs. Yeah. Have you seen those? No. Oh, it's great. Yeah, they really like those dogs. Jessica. Yeah. And we train the dog by taking that little town, rolling it around in my hamper. <laughs> I'm just thinking World War II has really had uh, tremendous consequences on the Western culture. Really? They really like the dogs? Oh, yeah. There's got to be a reason for that. Oh, you haven't seen those? No. Oh, they're great. Jessica. Yeah. You're 20. Yes, I'm 20. Yeah, they sell those movies in New York. They don't sell them out here. That's nice. Jessica, go ahead. No, uh, basically it's more of a, my point is more of a point of embarrassment for me. Um, every time, basically, every time I have an orgasm, 97% of the time I end up peeing yeah. with my orgasm. So does Dee Dee. She's telling us that during the break. Are you sure it's urine? Is that true? Oh, I, I, I've actually, oh, it's not. I actually got done. You better say something. I, I took a specimen cup and I, I, I actually held it underneath me the, the sec last time that I actually orgasmed. And it, 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 most of it is pee. It has a very strong acrid smell. As well. And, and by the way, doesn't everything become a specimen cup, cup once you pee into it? Like you could pee into a tumbler and it, now it's a specimen yeah, cup, yeah, right? Yeah. Point taken. Well, well, yeah. I understand how looking at it proved to you that it was urine. It was yellow. Mm. It was also yellow. Mm. I mean, right. it was, mm. 